mau aturkan semua apa game semua kasih tahu di siang sikit jadi kita bisa aturkan semua ya oke okay. uh, referee bapak buta kita semua di tengah juga kita atur semua line line semuanya dua sama referee nya di tengah ada ya iya iya yeah, yeah. you you get what I mean no? so just yeah. see what he can do whatever he want to do the first referee we get the first idea it's always a first time show for first time for everything you see to build the trust and everything you get what I mean no? Jangan jangan takut botak. Kamu mau wang, kita mau bikin wang. Bisa diatur semua ya. Hey. Ya. Saya mau kerja, saya mau kerja. Kami juga mau kerja. Ya, so ingin dapat uang banyak. So everybody make big money botak. Jangan takut botak, ya. Hmm, ya. Terima kasih. First hearing that five teams were interested, it whittled its way down to two. And then about a week ago, finally, one came forward and said, right, we're ready to sign you, come out here and let's talk. Nice to meet you. Good day. I'm signing for a full year. Could sign for longer, but to be honest, contract over a year out here is not worth the paper it's written on. If something goes wrong out here, you only get a couple of months to walk away anyway. So, But it does give you the option after 12 months that if you do do really well, you can uh, ask for more money and renegotiate your contract. I'm very pleased to be sitting here as head coach of Mitch Cooper going into the new season. You know, there'll be some ups and downs along the way, I'm sure. There'll be injury suspensions and refereeing decisions that we'll all talk about. But at the end of the day, everything we do from here on in is about winning. Where do you begin with the problem of Indonesian football? There's been decades and decades of scandals. Corruption, fans dying, watching the game, violence in the game, the usage of governmental funding, which makes it very political, which makes it very easy for match fixing to take place. That's been going on for decades and decades and decades. Players, officials, staff, they actually don't get paid on time, you know? And it's not like a two or three days delay. It's like talking about between three to eight months. Some players cannot really support their family anymore. And somebody come, okay, would you like to give up a, a game for just $10,000? I mean, it's very easy for them to take. I mean, you don't get paid, you get an easy money, which one do you take? Attention, please. Please give way to a lighting passenger. Now, what I'm doing is, you don't have to get involved at all. Right. Yes. That's Wilson's voice. So, I am trying to organize a four nation under 23 tournament in Myanmar. Myanmar, Mali, Singapore, Thailand. If we can go ahead and have the third and fourth place and the final, we are looking at a half a million dollars profit. Well, how does uh, how much money is needed to ensure that uh, Mali do what you say, Willie? So I will pay Mali about forty thousand US dollars per match. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna go back after three match with 120,000 US dollars, which is a lot of money for an African country. Yes. yes. Okay. So for Mali. Okay. It ends here. There are others. It's in my book. All the transcripts that we put in the book. 
and how much betting for a game? One million for the 2010 World Cup uh, warm-up qualifiers. So it, it's crazy, man. It's big money. Fixing is not only for gambling, not only for money, but it could be for honour. It can be for political ends and so on. So there are many dimensions to match fixing and it depends on what you want to get out of it. No physio, no assistant manager, no goalkeeper coach. Yeah, disappointing with the organisation, to be honest. You can only work with the tools you're given. And... I make you tired. I make you... Then I make you pass. Let's just say it needs to improve. It needs to improve. If, if this is going to be a, a challenging club in Indonesia, they're signing a lot of players. So to be honest, the pressure on me is ramping up. In Indonesia a week, uh, my first time working at this level in the country. And uh, yeah, the manager's saying to me now, he expects to win the league, so. <laughs> As you do, I suppose, we spend that much money, but it's just part and parcel of it. This, this is something I forget all the time. They pray before a game. There's me chatting away through their prayer and they're all waiting for me to stop talking. So I've got to get used to that. Can't work out, well, it's certainly not Catholic, so I'm not sure what religion it is. Coaches have to overcome so many problems here that other coaches in Europe don't have to. Factors that has nothing to do with football that actually sums up whether you're successful or not, you know. Foreigners, whether in football or not, they have to adjust and they just have to, they just have to go with it. But you, you do need a thick skin. Yeah, in terms of match fixing, that it is happening and that's happening very, very often and years after years, continuously, that is a fact. Rambutan, eh? Buat poker. Football. Who do you bet for, Indonesia or Malaysia? Well, but I think he's got a lot of money eh, tonight eh, for that game. Well, I, I don't gamble. You see that, but you just cannot prove that. You just cannot prove that. And um, you will have a hunch, you will notice it, you will think about it. It's like, this is, this is a case. This got to be a case, but you just cannot prove it. In the situation like a match fixing and stuff, the physio will not be approached. I tell Simon, I cannot speak in English good, but I learn English with English music. Sometimes I problem, but I always learn with Simon. Diferente here? Yeah. Here, sir. The <laughs> name in Brazil, Mini. Every time I see this, <laughs> I like. Because, um, First Korean play in Brazil. Make them run, okay? You play with a little bit of common sense. If you lose ball, lose ball, don't chase. Get back in, have shape, say, come on then. Okay, conserve energy in defense, use energy going forward. Bobby, come and get the ball, Bobby. Good, well done. Advantage, we have the ball. Good lead. Oh, and he skips past the ball to blue. Quicker, quicker! Oh, oh. 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 Good shot. 
<laughs> zero, zero, I'd be, hmm. But we lost to a shit team. They're not good enough to beat us. But they have. Now, understand one thing. My teams do not stop. You play for my team, you fight until 94th, 95th, 96th minute. You don't just slow down. But today was more about me learning and them learning about me and less really about the result. I thought the team we played against were a good team, but um, I think what we showed, we, we showed that we have a lot of ability and we will get better and better and better. Today was, today was just about learning. It was, it was about understanding, so I'm happy. I don't like to lose, I never like to lose, but as far as what I've taken away from the game, I learned an awful lot about the players today. So that's good. I've been plucked from relative obscurity in, you know, Ryman South and being given an opportunity at the national team of the Philippines and succeeding with that and taking them to a, their highest FIFA rankings they've ever been in, in their history. Classic underdog story, I'm not, I'm not a name, I'm not a premiership manager, I've not worked in England at a particularly high level, but I've been given an opportunity and I'm hugely thankful for everyone that just wanted me to do well and, and it was an amazing feeling to come out of that with success. You know, there's guys who work first team coaches in the premiership who've, who've never been anywhere near a national team and you know, I'd like to think I could get another international team job eventually but I need to take advantage of the opportunity that was given to me. And I need to, to, like I say, push it as hard as I can to make a career out of it. Wonderful, wonderful victory for the Philippines. Great results, the best ever. When Simon first went to the Philippines, football was not a popular sport. They didn't have their own league. They didn't have their own stadium. They had a national team that weren't competitive. Simon came in and changed all that. And, you know, that's going to be, like, probably one of the biggest successes of his whole career. Oh, it's tough. It's, it's not easy. And sometimes, you know, we might take, niggle at each other and take things out on each other because there isn't really anyone else that, you, you know, when you're at home, you've got your family, you've got friends, you've got a massive support network. But here, Simon and I literally vent at each other. Simon's like, oh, it's, you know, we're on the same team and we are, but it's, it's difficult. Come back to the match fixing or arranging a game. It's well possible because players might decide just to do anything to get something for themselves. Small bonuses to, to live, you know. So yeah, we, we did um, just, a, just a small try, you know, try out to see how simple or how, e how easy it is actually maybe to, to, uh, to buy a player or to, um, to, to give some money out to, um, for him to do something in a game, you know. So we were asking the, um, this particular player. We're talking about the goalkeeper over here. We have uh, three schemes for him. Whenever he gets the first ball in the game, he will just kick it out to the stand anywhere for a throw out. The second one he has to do is just to fake an injury in the last 10 minutes of the game, basically asking for substitution. Now, if the, the coach has used the three substitution and they're in winning position, we'll ask him to let the goal in, basically. Only in winning position, yeah. We just want to see whether it works or not. I'm sure you want to prove that it can be done easily. We've been getting proof from the horse's mouth in terms of secretly recorded conversations, SMSs, WhatsApp. But fixing a game, uh, I think it's a bit too much. Yeah. Too ballsy, man. If you look out and see how happy the fans are, you know, they're supporting their club all the way to the end. They're ready to die for the club, for the players. And um, at the end, the, the club themselves or the players, some of them just basically betray them. You know, betray them. Indonesia has got the best fans. They're just amazingly loyal and and they just long for their national team to, to
to win and be successful. And I, and I just don't see this as just soccer. You have to understand, soccer is just a mirror of what goes on throughout the country at any level. Football in Indonesia, it's more than money. It's more than rasuah. Kalau untuk player, saya paling tahu, karena saya sudah terjun dalam situ. Contoh, mereka beli Twitter, mereka beli website, mereka bikin satu kompetisi, satu turnamen yang turnamennya itu belum dilaksanakan. Macam mungkin friendly match antara Persib Bandung melawan Surabaya, tapi itu tak ada. Tak, rame di pasar jurian. Semua pasang-pasang. Untuk besoknya main, besoknya main. Hari ini dikeluar, tak, satu hari, dua hari. Lepas itu hilang, tak. Ini kan untuk Asia tuh memang berbisnisnya begitu. Pasar taruhan tuh seperti begitu. September 2010, when my boss asked me to look into do a story of uh, Togo playing Bahrain. It turned out that the Togo team was a fake one. And uh, after asking um, the Bahrain side who organized the match, they told us it was a company in Singapore called uh, Football For You. We realized that it belonged to one Wilson Raj Perumal. The company was a front. It didn't exist. And we realized that this could be something bigger, you know? As a coach, it's very frustrating if you, if you, if you see things happening that are not normal. And, but you cannot actually say, oh, that was match fixing, because they don't do it that obviously. There are some people that don't want to do that, some referees, but it's got so bad that some managers actually give money just so that the referees don't ref against them. And you, you ref fair. Here's some money for you to ref fair. You know, it just is horrible. As a coach, it's just, why do you do that? Why you train? Why you pick players? Why you keep players happy? Why do you uh, make amazing speeches, like Braveheart speeches before a game, you know? Uh, it's pointless, you know? Why do you study leadership and psychology? Why do you, why do you bother scouting how do they play and coming up with the, with, the, with the appropriate tactics? And why bother all of that if in the 80th minute, the referee just says penalty kick? Bonnie has promised bonus for win today. Today, win bonus. So you have every incentive to win. More money. More fast cars and cheap women. Didn't get that. Stand up, be big, strong. Under 21s, Mitra Kuka. Strong. OK, always stay in front, in front, in front. Oh, oh. This is one of the things that annoy me. Match, match officials cutting corners, he should have done this before. You got the players out standing in the heat, out of the dressing room, and now he's talking to them. Some fucking self-important match official. He should have been in the dressing room 20 minutes before checking players and players' names that match the shirts. Not coming out here and doing it while all the players are now cooling down because they're out here, they've just stretched, and now they're standing waiting for some old codger to sort himself out and read names off a list. Okay, just stop, just stop, just stop and listen. Okay? 
Five minutes, just stop and listen, then we can go, no problem. If you think that performance is going to win us the league, you've got another thing coming. You got bullied, bullied by 22, 21 year old kids. You're professional footballers, earning good money, and you're oh, not tackling, run past. You think we will win like this? You think we win games? No fucking heart! No heart! Just, oh, okay. Oh, mm, okay, okay. Lee goes in, gets a fucking elbow in the head. That's how much they want to win. I'm not happy in the slightest about how we got bullied. Every tackle. Who hit someone? If you think that is enough, then that's not. Concentrate. Okay? Understand? Good. Okay. The first time I met Simon McMenemy was on the semi-final of IFF 2010 in Jakarta. After the Philippines games, and he became sort of, uh, you know, a media darling back then, and people like him, and, you know, then before you know, he became the coach of uh, Mitra Kukar. My close friends uh, think, admire me for making the decision to give up my job and to come with Simon to follow his dream. I mean, it's a holiday. For the first month, maybe two months you're out here, it feels like a holiday. The longer you're here, the more people realise that actually this is your life. Giving up working two jobs, giving up seeing my friends, to, and going to all the way to the other side of the world and not really doing anything was really hard. We have Hamka, who's national team centre-back the John Terry of Indonesian football. And we got Bastomi, who is the Paul Skulls of Indonesian football. And we're still waiting for two more under 23 national team players and one more foreign centre forward. So it's starting to get quite excited now, starting to see the squad kind of come together and it's all, it's all looking rather good. Gus, go do warm up. <laughs> Make sure it's different. Yeah. <laughs> What's this? Hey, Manu? No, no. <laughs> players are trying to be more creative because they know they've got players that they can trust with the ball. It's, uh, it's quite exciting. So first, just um, just a friendly talk and just how he is and who he's playing, where he's playing, what he's doing, and everything. And then um, here I'm explaining a little bit on um, that I need him to do something for me. Here is like a just for that I'll get the money. And then he asks, where are you now? So I said I'm in Jakarta, and I'll talk to him in detail. I know that as of uh, May 2014, there had been attempts to fix two teams, two matches in the Indonesian Football League. Just listen, and this is a three-way conversation. Two you player. So he mentioned the two teams here. Okay, Tapa. Big money, big money. Yeah, big, big money, money. Big, big money. money. Everybody make big money, Bota. Jangan takut, Bota. Yeah? Okay, juga, yeah? Yeah. Terima kasih. Yeah. 
So if you tell me that it's not happening, people are too afraid to do things, nope. Some people are still in the business and they will do. But it, you know, when it comes down to it, it's because it's so easy to fix game. True. It's almost like a business transaction. You want to make money, I want to make money too. So yeah, it's business. Hey, hello, Jack. Signal it, signal it, Jack. Yeah, yeah. So what time can we meet him? After uh, the afternoon after the training. So tonight? Six is here. Okay. We're actually offering him um, a certain amount of, uh, of cash, but then he said, well, after a deal, that he will take the money after he's doing a job. For me, that's also just like, well, you know, it's kind of a risky, but he only say no to the deposit just like later. It's not actually directly no, but just like not now, just later. But the way he took the question, the way he answered it, the way he talked about it, it's, it's in a very normal, relaxed way. You know, he become a little bit uncomfortable um, in some stage, but I think that's because of the, the place where we are, is in, in a public. Well, I think he just didn't see it coming from me. This looks like it's just dropped out of Europe somewhere. It's a European, but you can tell it's Asian at the same time because it's not looked after. It's five years old and it's dirty. And this is what frustrates me so much about Asian football is they build these amazing stadiums like this, which is incredible. Considering we're in the middle of the jungle, three hours from the nearest airport, they build a stadium like this and then just let it rot. I'd love to see it full, it just very rarely is. Sepak bola Indonesia juga dilanda oleh berbagai macam rumor dan tudingan di antaranya banyaknya permainan suap di dalam setiap event pertandingan. Apa yang sebenarnya terjadi? So what happens a lot is that the mayor appoints a manager that was involved in his election campaign. And so the manager uh, uses the club as a platform to make money. 
you know? And uh, so what he does is he appoints a coach and he gets a cut from the coach, a certain million. And he, every player he appoints, he get a cut from the players, you know? And coaches sometimes do that as well. So the coaches and the managers work together and the, the, the coach get a cut and the manager get a bigger cut. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's funny, but it's so sad, you know. If you can't win, you might as well lose. And if you lose, uh, hopefully you can lose by such a scoreline. Now, if it's been agreed that that would be the scoreline, then the match fixer with that, that information, he will go to his betting operations, illegal betting operations, and uh, inform his uh, superiors that the game is going to turn out this way. So with that knowledge of uh, the scoreline, they will bet whatever amount that, that, that would not raise any suspicion. Of course, at the top you have one boss, or uh, maybe the most two. They are the ones who will finance the operations. Below that you have the runners, or even the lieutenants who will direct the play at the ground level. There are, of course, people on the ground who need to speak to the players, to the officials, to corrupt them. And these guys are the ones that have direct contact with the players. And they'll call football players like 15, 16 years old, telling them that, hey, this is the today's football. This is the smart way of playing football. You lose the game, yes, but you have something in your pocket. You know, For a guy that young, he might not know the consequences, but uh, that's how they work. They tell them that this is today's smart football. Simon actually got told that a referee had phoned the club, said, if you want to guarantee a win, it's going to cost you however much. Someone told Simon, and Simon was just, like, not happy. And he spoke to the owner. And the owner was like, oh, well, you know, sometimes you have to in order to win, and Simon's like, no, <laughs> we're not doing that, not while I'm head coach, you know, I'm not being any part of that. And the owner was like, oh, no, no, yes, of course, no, no, we're none, not part of that and everything. And it was completely brushed aside and forgotten, and it wasn't that. But then Simon's going into that game thinking, well, the other head coach has probably had exactly the same phone call. I don't know if he said yes or not. So you could be going in there, all the preparation in the world, not going to win. We've still got one game after this to go, and that's away in Papua. That'll be a tough game, but it's important you win your home games. So we've got to take three points today to make sure that we can go to Papua, have a good fight. And if we take the three points there, that puts us at 33, three behind the leader. So fingers crossed that'll be enough. OK, Coach, can you tell us about the last condition from your team? Uh, the team's in very good condition. We have two players who've come back from injury today, so we have no injury problems. Everyone is 100% fit, so everyone very confident of the game today. I just get their team sheet. They have four substitutes. They can't even name seven substitutes. That tells you they're struggling. That tells you they're struggling with injuries. That tells you they're struggling with suspensions. So that means from minute one, you get at them. You don't let them out. You don't give them a break. The first tackle, the first header, you win. But we batter them, batter them, batter them, batter them. Three points puts you third. We have to take care of business today. This team have come here to defend. They've not come here to go forward. They've not come here to score goals. For them, it's damage limitation. 
If they can come away with a 0-0, they're happy. You get one goal, they crumble. They finish. But you have to get that one goal. And we keep the pressure in the final third. Because eventually they'll crack. They are not good enough defensively to handle you for the whole game. <laughs> That is a really, really difficult one to take. To dominate the game that much. For one reason or another, there was no luck with us today. Nothing fell. We've now got to go to Papua, travel two days, drive in a bus, stay in a crappy hotel. We've got to go to Papua and take three points. Team has used all the substitutions so I cannot fake an injury. But because we talk about that, me letting a goal in, then I did that. Just I just confirmed in a WhatsApp. The game was very fishy from the beginning to the end. With all the red card, the injuries, um, the goals, and how it was defended, how it was how it was being scored, and so on. So um, yeah, I think there's something else happening in that game. After the game, you know, I, I call him. This time, he he arranged a place to meet in a coffee shop in a, in a, in a mall, one of the one of the cafe there. So uh, we get there, we have coffee, and um, then I try to offer the the envelope, you know. But he said he he didn't want to take it then. I think it's mostly because it's a very crowded place. He, he doesn't want people to see that there is a transaction going on. Then we grab a cab, and then we just drove away, and that's in the cab 
where it's only me and him and the driver that uh, I handed over the money and he took it. No question, he just took it and said, oh great man, thanks. Uh, you know, this is like a bonus and it's awesome, you know, it's a blessing, you know. Like, great, thank you. And it's like, um, in, in the back of my head, I think he, he was kind of hoping that in the, in the future I would, have, would do the same again to him. You would like to interview him and ask him to speak in front of the camera. I mean, with uh, guarantee all his safety and everything, but he refused it. And um, I think the main reason that he didn't want to talk in front of camera is basically safety. If that is your life and suddenly you are you're saying that you're part of a scheme and you're doing that and you're on camera and forever will haunt you, you know? They think, oh, we don't have money. If you want, I will buy one month and finish. Sometimes players don't play. Okay, just give me one month and everything okay. Me too also, plus them. But about my speaking, everything, I don't, I don't know. If one day, Mambi are coming to me, I will say to follow. I don't care. If they give money, maybe good for me, maybe for forever, I don't want it. So you, you not get paid, you, you not get paid for three months, four months, and someone gives you money, you say no. No, no, I don't want I will go home. I will, my father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were, we were thinking, you know, I was thinking first just, you um, know, it's good to show him the footage and let's say, hey man, you, see, you said I've never taken the, the money, but here you are, you know, and you did take it. But at the end we decided not to just, you know, because it's also just um, pure for uh, his safety first or the second that he will go and report um, to someone and we will be in trouble. to sell a band to other club. How do you think? I've, I've not heard anything about this. I not have... Uh, I don't know. All good? I'm giving a sack. What? Just both been giving a sack. There's a police. Right. Timing couldn't have been any better. The club have decided that last night's loss wasn't good enough and that in order to the club in order for the club to develop, they need to bring in new head coach. Discussion about it, the president popped off this morning and so did Bonnie. No one took the bottle to actually call me into an office and talk to me about it. So they sent the guy who's head of police. They let me take training this morning and they called us into the stadium and they've been chatting in the stadium and they said um, because we didn't reach our target of eight points in the last four games. So. Um, I just get you together for last time. Um, some of you know, some of you don't know. This morning, last night, management had a meeting and they decide that best for Mitra Kuka that I not continue as coach or Darren not continue as coach. Um, 
I don't know what happens from here. For you guys, I'm sure you will be all looked after. With me, nothing is ever personal. Everything is always football. I said to you, first day of season, I will put the best 11 players I have, in my opinion, on the football field. And if players get left out, players get left out, I must deal with that. But you will only ever get left out for football reason, never for personal reason. You must believe that to be true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I go in your home and I talk. Maybe my boss? Yeah, yeah, uh, just... One new coach in Arima. Well, if, if yeah. they want, they want. But just stay in touch, let me know. Yeah. Right, we go. Nanti sore kita ke rumah dia. Leaving the club fourth in the league, half a season done. Uh, my target was fifth. Just three weeks ago, they changed the target. I had a meeting with the president. The president said in the last four games, the club want me to take eight points. But they didn't say what happened, would happen if you didn't get eight no, points. They, but... they didn't say, get eight points or we're going to sack you. They just, that was something that they wanted you to aim for. So clear goals weren't set and they're moving the goalposts just because suddenly a team that they thought would, they'd be happy finishing fifth are doing well, so they've decided that actually they want to be greedy and try and get higher. Which is fair enough, but you can't then sack the coach if they haven't... Well, they can, they have. Well, OK, they this, have, this but that's Indonesia. Yeah. You play a certain formation and it's not usual, or you put a player out of position, which is something you do out of... because it's, it's necessary tactically. They don't understand it and they, they, they actually try to tell you who should be playing, who should not be playing. That's a, that's a big turnoff as a coach, you know? Either you trust me or you don't. You trust me and if it doesn't go well, you blame me, fine. But that's why I don't want to coach right now. They were playing um, Surabaya Bayang Bayangkara United. I mean, man, I don't even know their name anymore. They've been changing it a lot this year. It's a team owned by a police force in Indonesia. So um, we're going to expect a lot of uh, police supporters in the stadium today. Well, I think with uh, Simon McManamy, I think, um, I think he got a culture shock. That's how I see it, you know. He come with an amazing football strategy and uh, tactics and game plan, but I think he, he missed something about the culture. If um, Simon probably understand that and manage to dig into that, I think he, he will do really good over here. Because I mean, he, 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 already, he, he, he already, people like him. Without doubt, the most enjoyable part of this job is standing in front of so many people every week, standing in front of so many crazy fans, appreciating the passion for your team and against your team just witnessing people going mad over goals and, and penalties and free kicks. and The pinnacle of, of the last three years was the two semi-finals in the Bunkano in Jakarta in front of 90,000 people and an estimated TV audience of, I don't know, 400, 500 million people across Southeast Asia. 
you could work a lifetime and not get that opportunity. And to have represented a country at the same time, to stand as a, a head coach with a country behind you and listening to the national anthem and knowing that the whole country's at home willing you on and is an incredible feeling. Maybe in the last four years or five years where the publicity and the awareness of match fixing has risen to, to this, what it is today, uh, there will be people who are naturally skeptical of what they're seeing on the screen, uh, on the field, and they will question, like, is this a fixed match? So, yes, we may have lost a few souls uh, in terms of fans, but uh, again, I think it's for the better that, you know, the awareness of match fixing is out to show that the world is trying to do something about it. Match fixing, yeah, sure. Although it's very difficult to prove, you know it goes on. Probably with players, probably with referees, probably with owners. In Vietnam, you had the problem, you know, owners would own three or four clubs in the same league. So if the team at the bottom of the league needed to three points not to get relegated on the last day of the season, they just happened to be playing the owner's other team that's towards the top of the league, you can guarantee who wins. You have to understand what's going on around football. You have to understand the personalities and the culture around football. And then you have to try and slowly work your own thoughts, ideas and into that mix. And at the same time, win games of football. The biggest thing you need to do, number one, you've got to make a rule that if you're involved in politics, you cannot be involved in clubs or in federations. Simple. But it's hard to do, it's big. The next step would be to, to not allow government funding for clubs. Lots of clubs would die, but it's better to have a league made out of 12 healthy clubs that are not political, not government funded. That way you, you don't mix politics with uh, football. That way you take out the corruption. And that way you take out match fixing. Then you need hunters like these guys who go around the world, who behave like match fixers in terms of searching out targets. And then when it's finally time to affect an arrest, then we rope in the local law enforcement. That's the only way to chase these guys. One thing you learn about Asia is that nothing goes your way and that you have to roll with the punches and make the best of every situation. You have to remember that you're number one and you have to look out for yourself. And if you can keep your morals intact while you're doing that, then that's just a bonus. Will it happen in, uh, in Europe, in uh, South America, in other parts of Asia, in Africa? Well, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure the same thing happens. You just, you know, you just, you just gotta prove it. The, the supporters out there were just giving all their heart out to sing, to jump, and, and, you know, and if at the, at the end the game is just being corrupted, being fixed, so what's the point of having a football game, really? You wanna, you wanna, have, a, you wanna have a clean game. <laughs>